Hey guys, Sean here from Tesla Family. Today is January 15th, 2020, and today marks one year since I got my 2018 Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor back from Tesla service after getting the high voltage battery replaced under warranty. That was a frustrating two month process, and I wanna detail it for you here and talk about how I think service has become much quicker since that has occurred. behind the replacement of the high voltage battery for my Tesla Model 3, my brand new Tesla Model 3 begins here on delivery day. I took delivery of my brand new 2018 Tesla Model 3 dual motor long range on September 17th, 2018 down in uh, Brooklyn, New York. I had been living in Buffalo at the time, so I had to fly to New York and then uh, took a train to Brooklyn and then walked to the Brooklyn Service Center. Uh, had a actually had a pretty decent uh, delivery experience and uh, here I am thumbs up excited to get into flash and start driving back home check out this link above that talks about why I decided to buy a model 3 and the story of what I did with my time between placing my reservation and delivery day all right so first supercharging stop on the way back to Buffalo was here in Binghamton New York the south central portion of New York plugged in for the first time and it was such a cool experience to just plug in your car and uh, forget about stopping at a gas station it was uh, a great experience I love supercharging it's super cool check out my playlist of all the superchargers that we've been to here uh, for Tesla family so far so full charge I charged up to a hundred percent because I still needed uh, plenty of charge to get back to Buffalo from Binghamton. I still had about a four hour drive ahead of me. I noticed that the full charge only equaled 274 miles, but the radio range of the Model 3 is 310 miles. That's about a 36 mile or 10% shortage. Hmm. So that uh, didn't seem to add up right, and I just kind of uh, figured I'd put that in my back pocket for now and just enjoy the drive home, right? So 13 days after delivery and driving around western New York and just loving my car, loving the new Model 3, I finally hit 1,000 miles. And I had been, I had continued to still notice these uh, shortages in, in peak charging, these lower rated ranges in peak charging. And I finally reached out to uh, Tesla service again here on October 10th, 23 days after service, or 23 days after delivery, I finally reached out to the Brooklyn Service Center again and began conversations about the reduced rated range. I was seeing an 80% charge only equaling 212 miles of rated range. That's about 35 miles short or about 12% lower than what you should, should see. The Tesla service tech had me keep the Model 3 plugged in to my universal mo mobile connector at home and bring the charge up to 80 to 85 percent and then keep it plugged in for several more hours to allow the cells to balance out. This diagnosis over the phone was because I lived almost 400 miles from the closest service center. With Buffalo, uh, there was no service centers in western New York. The closest one would have been Mount Kisco, which is close enough to... to uh, which is close enough to Brooklyn anyways, I just said, hey, if, since I picked up the car from Brooklyn, might as well just call them back. So again, I was working with a tech from Brooklyn. The service center called back the next day, and he told me that the suggestion of uh, that his suggestion of charging and trying to balance out the cells is actually working. He said in eight hours, the car went from a BMS difference, battery management system difference of 10% down to 8%. And so then I was instructed to keep doing this, keep charging and keep it plugged in for about 40 more hours and hopefully the difference will get down to about 0%. A follow-up email instructed me to actually bump the charge limit up to 90%. On October 12th, 25 days since delivery, version 9, I downloaded it. Uh, so from version 8 to version 9, that was a whole other cool experience. Um, all the additions that we got in version 9, uh, from the blind spot warning uh, to navigate an autopilot, well, that eventually came. 
um, with uh, no, conf no confirmation. Here we are, October 29th, 2018, 42 days since delivery. I packed up and left Buffalo. I took a job down in Maryland, where we live now, and I moved Tesla family from Buffalo down to Maryland. Here I am passing under the Peace Bridge in Buffalo, New York. So on November 4th, 48 days since delivery, I noticed a thin stress crack in the top glass of my Model 3 soon after moving to Maryland. That was kind of unusual, right? So I booked a service center appointment to look at the top class, and hey, why not also have them check on the high voltage battery since I had just moved to Maryland and now I actually had a service center that was close by. The earliest opening was November 16th, unfortunately, 12 days later. So on November 16th, they brought the car down to the service center. I dropped off the Model 3 for the top glass replacement, and information at that time was passed on to me that the high voltage battery will need, be, will need to be replaced. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. It's the first I've heard that there even talk, you know, the first talk I've heard about even replacing the battery. Um, but I figured, hey, you know, maybe this will fix the issues that I was seeing, and hopefully, you know, if I wait a week or two, uh, we'll have the problem all sorted out. Tesla gave me a loaner BMW X3, and I actually really didn't enjoy <laughs> having to drive an ICE car around, even though it was a brand new BMW. It actually felt kind of clunky, and I um, wanted to have an electric car. I wanted my Model 3 back. November 28th, uh, so the car had now been in service for 12 days by this time. I had only been able to exchange a couple text messages back and forth at the service center trying to get more information. Where's this battery at? Is it here yet? Are you going to put it in? Put it in? Keep in mind that I remember them telling me that it was only going to take about a week or two to have this completed. Uh, so I ended up call, contacting the Tesla executive care team to look for an update. Um, and because the service center still had no estimate for when the new battery would be would arrive and be installed, the executive care team said the update an update will be sent to me in three days. I did finally get uh, a couple text messages during that time period, um, but at the same time, I uh, was on Twitter and I saw Tesla uh, commenting on a Verge article. I think they shared an article from the Verge, uh, something about the topic of the Model Three, and. I said, hey, why don't I just go ahead and send a reply that I've been waiting for over two weeks for my replacement high voltage battery. Um, nothing I should hide, right? Why don't make it public and see if I can get a response? And waiting for the battery to be shipped to my local service center. What's the delay? And I didn't hear anything back. Well, on December 3rd, 17 days after being in service, I contacted the executive service team again, stating that I had only received two text messages from the service center. Each message stated that the service still had no update on the expected arrival time of my replacement high voltage battery. I expressed back to them in an email that I think two weeks is unacceptable for Tesla to not know where my new battery is or when it will arrive. I mean, you could send out a UPS package and track the thing day by day all the way across the country, right? Why can't Tesla track down my battery? Uh, I did reach out to the service center several times, and the only way that I got information from them was via a couple text messages, but the response time back to me was several hours to days later, and I was just getting so frustrated at this at this point. Um, you can't even you couldn't even call the service center because uh, their voicemail was full. December 4th, 2018, 18 days in service. Um, the service center finally called me to inform me that the new battery had arrived, but it arrived damaged. Wait, you said that the battery is here, but it's damaged? Yep, that's what happened. What am I supposed to do now? Well, they're going to go ahead and order another battery. That would take at least another week. Um, so because of my frustrations and already the process taking so long, they um, helped me out by uh, changing out my BMW, model, uh, my BMW X3 loaner for a Model S loaner, which, which I enjoy driving much more. December 14th, 2018, 28 days in service. I reached out to Tesla Corporate once again since I was not getting any reply from the service center on my emails or text messages requesting updates. This has now been two weeks since they ordered the second battery. And they ordered an expedited delivery, which I don't know why it was taking so long. And we're approaching two weeks since it was going to arrive. Um, I was getting really tired of the poor communication channels with the service team and I indicated I need regular updates and I'm not receiving them. The repair was dragging out for far too long. This is all information I was passing back to the executive service team 
at Tesla Corporate via an email. So I sent that email out and finally late in the day here on December 14th I received an email from the associate service manager uh, apologizing for the breakdown in communication he confirmed the battery has been shipped and with an expected arrival time of three to four days next day 29 days in service uh, I sent the following tweet in a reply to an Elon Musk tweet Elon I have my three but it's been sitting at Tesla service for nearly four weeks waiting for a high voltage bat battery replacement why so long to get replacement packs shipped I didn't hear anything uh, directly back from Elon, but shortly after, about an hour later, I see, received a direct message from Tesla. And they said, thank you for the feedback. I'll share this with the appropriate executive leadership and have someone reach out to you to ensure you the rest of the service visit has an improved communication. Thank you so much. So yes, your tweets are getting read by Tesla and Elon Musk. Maybe not always responded to, but they are at least seeing them. Now, after the direct, after I received that direct message, the executive escalations contacted me soon after via email, and they stated that they had heard about the long delay in receiving my new battery pack for the car, and that on Monday their teams would be willing, working diligently to source the pack for me. Their plan is to make sure that it is replaced as soon as possible so that I can get back enjoying my Model 3 like I should be enjoying it. Someone should be contacting me with more information early next week. On December 17th, I did finally receive an update from the service center that the battery is scheduled for delivery on Friday and that they will have it in the car by Saturday. Well, that sounds promising, right? So here we are, December 20th, 34 days the car has now been in service, and I asked the service center in an email exchange why the battery needed to be replaced. And the service center replied that the reason why the battery is being replaced was not available to them, but they do know that the engineering team instructed them to do so. On December 21st, now the car has been in service for 35 days, I received a call from the associate service manager that the second battery arrived damaged. Two batteries arrived, two batteries damaged. They ordered a third battery from New York and it should arrive the day after Christmas. December 22nd, 2018, the car has now been in service for 36 days. I sent the following tweet reply to Elon Musk, and this time I didn't get a response. But would it, uh, it would be nice if high voltage batteries could arrive to Tesla service centers without cracks. My three has been in service for five weeks. So far, two batteries have arrived with a crack. Let's hope the third one is a charm. No response back. But on December 26th, a day after Christmas, the car has been in service for 40 days. The associate service manager emailed that they had tracked the third battery down and they were expecting to receive it by the afternoon. They, and he indicated that once the battery is on site, they will reach out to me to let me know. And then I finally received a call late in the day that the associate, from the associate service manager telling me that the third battery arrived and again damaged. <laughs> Unbelievable. How can you even imagine this? sort of story, right? You need one battery for your car. It takes them three batteries to ship and all three come damaged. I'm like losing my mind at this point. Further steps would be addressed in two days. So 42 days in service, here we are, December 28th, the associate service manager called and I discussed my extreme dissatisfaction with the situation. I mean, is this car ever going to be fixed? Am I ever going to be able to drive my Model 3 again? What's going to happen? I brought up the potential for Lemon Law pursuit because I'm like, I just want a new car at this point. The next steps were discussed and a possible replacement for my Model 3 was, um, was brought up. Here we are, New Year's Day 2019. My Model 3 has been in service for 46 days. And here's a picture of me supercharging on a road trip with the loaner Model S to visit the family. So yes, I don't have my Model 3 and I'm driving around a Model S, but when's my Model 3 going to be finished? January 2nd, 2019, my car has been in service for 47 days. I emailed the service manager that I was ready to move forward with the replacement Model 3. On January 8th, 53 days that my car has been in service, here's a picture of it sitting there. Not inside being worked on, but just sitting in a lot outside of the service center. 
uh, I met with the service manager in person finally and we discussed a possible replacement model 3 but he said that, that may take several more weeks to maybe even months and I'm like I don't want that to happen he mentioned that a fourth battery was on its way and they will attempt to install it so I'm like all right let's give this one last shot I mean the fourth one's got to arrive the right way right January 11th, 2019, 56 days my car has been in service. I was notified that the fourth battery was successfully installed, finally, and it checks out perfectly. Oh my gosh, it's finally come to an end. 56 days my car has been in service. Here's a image from the service invoice showing the part number that they replaced, and of course it was covered under warranty. And on January 15th, after 60 days in service, I picked up my Model 3 and I drove it home and I parked it here in my garage. And that was such a great feeling. But it took 60 days. I was without my car for 60 days. I still didn't feel that great about the situation. So here's some stats on one year. The whole theme of this video, besides the fact of talking about the whole process of getting the battery replaced, is one year after having my battery replaced. How was it doing? Well, in one year since having the, the battery replaced, I put 16,279 miles on the car with an average of 264 watt-hours per mile, which is above the 240 watt-hours per mile that's rated. I used 4,298 kilowatt-hours, or about 4.3 megawatt-hours, or about 58 charge cycles, full charge cycles. In this tweet here, you see from Elon Musk, dated April of 2019, you see that the uh, Model 3 drive unit and body is designed to be like a, com a commercial truck for a million mile lifetime, and the battery module should last 300,000 to 500,000 miles, or 1,500 cycles. So that leaves me with about 1,442 charge cycles left, or 409,659 miles remaining. That's incredible. Who drives a car 400,000 miles, right? Using the 16,000 miles that I drove in one year, extrapolating that out, that would be about 25 more years of driving. Who even keeps a car for 25 years? That's incredible. My Model 3 is amazing. So on the one year of my battery replacement, my car had 220 miles or 74% state of charge on it. Basically running the calculations forward, that would give me a 297.3 miles at 100% charge, state of charge. The EPA estimate now on a, a dual motor Model 3 is 322 miles combined and 296 miles highway. So I'd say we're still doing pretty good. A lot better than the 274 miles I saw on day one supercharging in Binghamton, New York. So has Tesla service improved? From what I have experienced, yes. I would definitely say yes because in July 2019, I scheduled a tire rotation after 12,000 miles with the car. A mobile tech arrived at my home and checked my tire wear. I was expecting that I'd have to pay for a tire rotation. He told me the tire wear was even, so no rotation was needed and did a complimentary inspection all free of charge. That's great, right? I had such a good experience with the Tesla mobile service, Tesla mobile techs. That's good. Uh, and then uh, in October 2019, you'll see my video here on the replacement of my front windshield. I dropped off my Model 3 on a Friday and I picked up picked it up on Monday and the windshield was all complete. Uh, Tesla even gave me some Uber credits to use in order to get around. Hey, thanks for watching the video everyone. Give me a thumbs up and comment below if you really liked it. And don't forget to subscribe to get notified of all of our future videos. Thanks, we really appreciate it.